Hello, everyone. I'm going to officially say feeling smart but happy. I'm going to officially say good evening to everyone. Uh, remind you of just a few things before while we let uh, a few more people we hope come. Uh, first of all, if you have never used Zoom before, you should be able to find the icon for the chat box, the conversation box, and please, during the webinar, if you have any questions or if there's anything that I should know, please type your comments, questions in there because I can see them and that will be my job throughout the webinar tonight. Uh, I'm going to, just before we finish, open a poll to do, get a little bit of feedback from you about the webinar. Uh, let's see. I think that and we're hoping we will have we will have time. Uh, Mihaela is going. Mihaela is going to leave us some time for discussion and exchange at the end. So I want to officially welcome everyone and welcome and thank Maria Mihaela Fabiero, who's our presenter for tonight. And among the long list of her competencies, she's a translator, interpreter, interpreter, mediator, and a research. And tonight she's going to share with us uh, some research she's done on the impact of communication and emotion in intercultural um, mediation. I will let Maria Mihaila introduce herself further and I'm right here watching everything that you're saying in the chat box and wish you all a very, very good webinar. Over to you, Mihaela. Mihaela. Hola. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much, Linda, for the, this marvelous presentation that you have done. Thank you uh, to all these, uh, to, to all of you, also in name of Seattle Italia. And also thank you to all Seattarians. And uh, it's my intention to develop and uh, uh, to do my best and our best of Seattle Italia and also to other Seattle International Seattle to, to develop our culture into the world. I thank you also to Linda and also to Steve Miller for supporting this webinar. Uh, as um, as uh, as Linda, do you hear me? I do. Yes, we hear you fine. Okay, okay, okay. As Linda anticipated, um, I wanted to share with you my research on uh, communication and emotion in the intercultural mediation. Why? Because communication and emotions develop relationships. Um, we know that long and authentic uh, intercultural relationships could not exist if the main tool of the relationship, which is, of course, communication, would not exist. The communication in this sense uh, implies two aspects. Uh, to know how to express our own needs, what we need exactly, taking into consideration the others, and to be able to listen the needs the other may express. This implies an emotion. As such, whether the emotion is positive, it engages dialogue, but whether emotion it is negative, uh, it may generate conflicts or misunderstandings. It goes the same for communication. Whether it is effective, communication um, commits to uh, dialogue. Whether it is ineffective, communication might be the origin of the conflict. So we can say that communication and emotion may become sources of misunderstandings of conflict. However, whether both factors are properly managed and regulated, communication and emotion may become the keys to resolve the conflicts. 
this is the reason why the approach to resolve conflict has a name that we all know. It's called intercultural mediation. This, um, uh, the intercultural mediation implies that the interculturalist or the, also the mediator knows how to manufacture, let's say, and make adequate use of three heads and three hearts. I mean, one, one head and one heart of the mediator and the other two of the parties involved into the conflict. I have structured it in this way, my research, in three chapters, intercultural communication, emotion, intercultural mediations, and then I will share with you the conclusions. Talking about intercultural communication, I took into consideration the cultural factors, the face negotiation theory, uh, the theory of anxiety and their spontaneity, and also the intercultural approach to social works. Talking about emotion, I wanted to have a, a, a straight approach to define the concept of emotion um, and uh, also to uh, bring some studies and also some books uh, written in Italy and France because my research was mainly um, done in uh, Italy and France. And then I have, uh, I had to uh, confront uh, the studies and the authors in Italy and the France as well. Uh, then um, I approached, I wanted to, to approach um, to a definition of the intercultural mediation and at the end we will have some um, surprise, so be prepared please. Um, the origin of uh, the research I am talking a little bit about the origin and the methodology that I have used, verbal and non-verbal communication, um, the difficulty that um, the professionals meet to capture the emotion of the own culture, to recognize as well its nature and to adequately regulate it. Difficulty as well to capture the emotion of, um, and to decode its nature and to possibly regulate it. Uh, why? Because I was in search of an approach to a transcultural emotion, to a common emotion, to many cultures, and uh, defined as such by them, but whose arousal may prevent, comprehend, and manage misunderstandings, disagreements, conflict between individuals belonging to different cultures. The method I have used was a quantitative research, case study, model building, specific literature and parallel analysis. As I specified before, Italian, French and Canadian. Uh, I used also a qualitative research, semi-structures, uh, recorded interviews, uh, and uh, I took care uh, that uh, the interviews were um, from different nationalities. And also I used a provocative content. Uh, taking into consideration the cultural factors, I, I consider that we should before uh, have an approach to what culture, what the term culture might define. Um, according to Kim, and, to Kim Gadigans, the term culture usually is reserved to refer to a systems of knowledge. In the opinion of um, Hofstede, culture is the collective programming of the mind, distinguishing the members of one group or category of people, distinguishing one from the others. In the opinion of Hall, Edward Hall, communication is culture and culture, of course, is communication. Um, Probably you know very well that Hall um, split these uh, cultural factors in, um, in three categories, time, space, time, and context. Talking about space prosemics, we know that there are intimate, personal, social, and public space. Uh, some people need, need bigger homes, bigger cars, bigger offices. Uh, in his opinion, Americans need greater use of space, while Japanese need less space, for example. Um, in his book, The Hidden Dimension, he's talking about high territoriality. What does it mean? 
people see to mark out the areas and tend to be low context. Uh, what does it mean? Short messages, they communicate through short messages, much on verbal communication, uh, whilst the low territoriality, uh, it, it happens where people create informal context. Uh, there are explicit messages, simple and clear. This is the case of Americans, Germans, Swiss, and the people uh, from Scandinavian areas. Um, whether we interact with other people, um, we should take into consideration that it is fundamental to understand uh, which is the adequate distance or the territory to be maintained. So uh, we make uh, not people feel un uncomfortable. Talking now about time, we know that there is a monochromic time and polychronic time. Uh, we can do things uh, at a time. We are able to do a lot of things uh, at the same time which is called Latin time. For example, people from Mediterranean context. Um, concerning the context, as I mentioned a little bit before, we have low context, time is highly organized, project is much more important than the process. And in high context, practically is the opposite. Space and time are part of the communication system as they may affirm as people may affirm, reject, or contradict verbal messages. Um, concerning the face negotiation theory, which was for me very, very, very interesting, this theory has been um, made by Stella Ting to me. Um, she's um, a human communication um, a professor at the California University. And uh, she said the concept of face has been uh, for the first time elaborated by, by Erwin Goffman. Um, the term face may be defined as the positive social value a person effectively claims for himself. Uh, to me, uh, knows that uh, this role changes in relation to the circumstance. What does it mean? The same person will not show the same attitude within the informal context rather than the formal context. Otherwise, he or she will lose the face. This is a face negotiation theory. Um, she also affirms that the image of self differs from culture to culture. As each individual uh, was born and grew up into a determinate context and uh, a defined group, but uh, very soon, uh, the individual should comprehend the rules of that group, whether he's allowed to do things or whether he's not, uh, whether he will play the rules not admitted, not allowed within that group, he will certainly lose his face, he will be out of the group. And it was interesting for me to do the research also from a linguistic, from the terminology point of view. In Italian, we say perdere la faccia. In Romanian, ascoltare faccia curata. So this term of face is also used into the items. English, we have to lose the face. In French, perdre la face, and also in uh, German and uh, uh, Spanish and Arabic. Perdere la cara. Stella thing to me um, affirms that there are um, two kinds of um, cultures, collectivist cultures and individualism one. Uh, in collectivist cultures, individuals tend not to save his own face, but the interest of the group. Whether into the individualism cultures, the individual will save his own face. Um, as the South is predominant. This is the case of Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, and Scandinavian areas. Um, in order to conduct an effective intercultural communication, because uh, she considered that uh, our communication, and we also, I think we all consider that our communication um, should be effective all the times, so we should take into consideration three scales. 
to know our the cultural differences to reflect about our own self and to take in, to be able to work with ourselves to be able to take into consideration the other perspective and to provide interactive skills uh, i mean uh, communication skills theory of anxiety and uncertainty this is Jung Kim and William Goodinkons. They are two researchers and authors of theories of intercultural communication. They say that um, a relationship with strangers, with foreigners, with people we do not know because they are coming from different uh, countries and cultures, um, these relationships belonging with, with people belonging to different cultures are the most stressful ones. Uncertainty is strictly related to cognition, whilst anxiety is strictly relation to emotion, because we are not able to predict the behavior of our interlocutors. Uh, individuals engaged in an intercultural inter uh, interaction may fear to be negatively impacted or um, uh, manipulated or negatively judged or even rejected by the group. So this is the origin of anxiety. Um, there is also a connection between the, the theory of anxiety and the theory of face negotiation. I don't want to lose my face, so I have to be uh, to show myself certain, and I don't want to show my anxiety when uh, I am supposed to interact with people from different uh, groups. Uh, there is a, um, a very interesting passage of Hall into his book, The Silent Language. Uh, he described uh, at the time very well uh, this, uh, this kind of circumstance, of, of strange circumstance. If you're born and bred American and you've lived in an any non Anglophone country, you may have realized after a time that local people you met didn't just speak a different language. They were really weird. They stood too close to you or too far away. Their voices were too loud or too soft. After a month, you may have wondered whether you were going mad. In a sense, you were. You were suffering that has come to be called culture shock. Culture shock can make you feel as tough you've been detached from reality. Um, this concept of culture shock has been analyzed by Claude Carmel and uh, Marguerite Cowen Emmerich into this book, Shock de Culture. The authors made research in Europe and Quebec uh, on the difficulties that the social workers encountered while they were interacted with migrants and their families. Um, they mentioned in the book that such culture shocks are felt by migrants like a treat to their own identity. Um, why? Because migrants and not ever migrants, foreign people or displaced people have difficulty in language communication. They have a different perception of the body. They have a different concept of space and time. Um, I do consider very important to make the example of Tobina Pan um, and um, his model of ethnopsychiatry covers aspects of politics, religions, moral and symbols and objects. Um, he took an example of an African child. Uh, this African child does not speak at school because of his uh, language issues. He is considered to be an autistic child, which is not the case. Nathan's question was at that moment, which language the child should be supposed to talk as his family members communicate using three languages, Kabyl, French, and Arabic. The method that the Camillari and Cohen Emmerich suggest is the method consisting in an open, very adequate and changeable communication through uses of images, nonverbal communication and gestures. 
uh, when they were talking about the social workers and the mediators, their opinion on that um, these professionals should become a sort of bridges, uh, able to build a bridges between identities. Uh, and in French, it's passerelle d'identité. Uh, concerning the emotion, my research was um, to, um, to read a lot of books, but to, to capture um, the main and the most significant um, ideas and concept of, of the emotion. Uh, you know, Jean-Paul Sartre, Emotion, this is a transformation of the world. Jacques Cosnier, there is a doctor and psychiatrist, uh, French, uh, considers that if there are no emotions, there is no communication. If there is no communication, those, there is no society. Paul Ekman, that I'm sure that you know very well, consider, uh, identifies um, basic emotions. Uh, and um, about these, he said that each emotion has unique features. Each emotion has characteristics in common with other emotions. They are rapid. Uh, their uh, onset, they have a short duration. Emotion prepare us to deal with important events. Emotion pr produces uh, changes in our brain, uh, also send signals. And he also affirms, we don't become emotional about everything. Some people are much more emotional than others. Antonio Damasio, he reports in the magazine La Richesse, La Qualité des Sciences, uh, that the emotion precedes the feeling. It's much more short than the feeling. Feeling an emotion does not imply that we necessarily come to realize this. We humans, we feel first the emotion of sadness and after we feel that feeling of sadness. Vincent de Pré, uh, there is a Belgian philosopher, um, into her books, Les Emotions qui ne fabriquent, um, affirms that people uh, are strictly related to their own language. Um, and she made an example. People of Yoruba and Chinese from Taiwan um, use uh, uh, some words in order to express their emotions. And those words are uh, related to parts of body. For example, um, uh, the word heart dominates our emotions. Um, to have one's heart broken, if the heart isn't strong, the heart is restless. And she also affirmed that we manufacture emotions and emotions manufactures us. Emotion exists only within the relationship we will build with other human being. And there is a very significant affirmation of Albert Jacquard, a French scientist. We can teach to a computer to say, I love you, but we cannot teach to a computer how to love. Um, Michel Lovreau, uh, on, on the French side, uh, the French psychologist, uh, considers emotion is like a shock. It plays, emotion plays with us as a pianist plays on his piano. Michel Lacroix is a French writer and philosopher um, concerning the emotions, affirms that emotion is the way to escape to spleen. When an emotion comes out, our body reacts. Uh, giving voice to our emotions means giving voice to our body. In his book, Le Culte de l'Emotion, um, he's focusing very well on this aspect of homo sentience and the emotional cathedrals. Cathedral, there is a, a metaphor to um, give a mean to our relationship. Um, in his book, sorry, I just want to, if there are questions, just let me know. Okay. Um, it, uh, Mihaela, I'll let you know. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you very much. So far, we're, so far we're doing fine. 
Okay, okay. Um, in his opinion, the human type um, is um, corris who corresponds nowadays to our representation of extreme individualist society is the individual who offers his sincere devotion to the emotion. So he's really, is strictly related to uh, his feelings, his emotions, not about what he says, but it's about what he feels. Um, he prefers the emotion shock. Um, um, as um, also he's, he continues to, con to, 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 to affirm that um, the um, effective life is action and not contemplation. And also emotion is able to encourage individuals to met their fellows. Uh, such emotional meetings or relations create communities, collective emotions. Such collective emotions help to build connections. These connections are um, considered, are seen into his book as cathedrals. Um, in Lacroix conceptions, there are ephemeral cathedrals made of dreams and strong cathedrals where connections are built to last. Um, in our nowadays and changeable society, we are legitimate to build cathedrals where each uh, communication act, individual or collective, may bring and connect one to another. Um, the empathetic and emotional cathedrals may engage a dialogue between identity and alterity, a mutual respect and values recognition. We should do our best that each cathedral may be built up, not by homo sentient, by, but by homo interculturalis. Homo interculturalis must get one step ahead of homo sentient. Um, also, there is important uh, this um, fact how to tame emotion, especially how to, to tame our negative emotions. An Irish proverb teaches us that you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. This shows us that the best manner to get to channel the fear of the animal is to tame it and not to impose our will. There is also um, a, a, an important passage into the little prince that I'm sure that you know it very well. The conclusion is one only understands the things that one tames. This is the, the, the um, conclusion of the thoughts. There are um, also um, many uh, methods that different authors um, have um, explained into their books. For example, Catherine Maillard, La Gestion Mentale, reports that our mental habits reflect our emotional habits. And for each of us, there is a pathway of coping. And uh, for in, in her opinion, this process is called rebalancing process. On Italian side, we have Luigi Anoli, and uh, he considered that humans are not passive victims of emotion. In face of them, in face of emotions, humans have certain degrees of freedom, so they may regulate selectively their emotions. Humans are able to adjust their expectations and actions or reactions according to their interlocutors. They are able to modulate their emotional reactions and expression. Uh, one of the methods he suggests is writing. And such method I have also encountered into the James Penn Baker books. Uh, there is, um, Penn Baker is an American social psychologist. And in his book, Opening Up, The Healing Power of Emotion, uh, he writes, it is more important to focus on those issues that you are, you are currently living with. If you find yourself thinking or dreaming about an event or experience too much of the time, writing about it can help to resolve it in your mind. If there has been something that you would like to tell 
others but can't for fear of embarrassment or punishment express it on paper really let it go and write about your very dead emotions write continuously oh okay and uh, there is another passage yeah? because in um, uh, the second methodologies he recalls your genre habit uh, talking about traumatic experiences. Traumatic experiences elicit powerful and complex emotions. Traumas, of course, tend to be associated with a host of negative emotions. Sadness, guilt, anger, anxiety, and depression. Having emotion, says uh, Pan Baker, is not a question of right or wrong. Emotions just are. If you feel an emotion while writing about the trauma, admit it on paper. Uh, and also, uh, um, I consider it important to recall Carl Rogers and his methodology and uh, talking about another emotion and another behavior, which is empathy. Empathy is a special way of coming to know other and ourselves. When empathy is extended, it rescues us from our feelings and the loneliness. This is a passage from his book on becoming a person. Uh, empathy, uh, Roger says, is important in relationship and also in our interactions with people. He called it a social empathy, he called it a social emotion, an emotion that is found in a social context where the lack of it is clearly a threat to society. In my relations with persons, says Rogers, I have found that it does not help in the long run to act as if I were something that I am not. Our attitude thus to be what we are will help us to dominate our hectic emotions and comprehend the other's point of view. If we are empathetic, able to listen, transparent, with a positive and conditional regard, the other will become responsible. Because, he continues, at a basic level, human beings are good and trustworthy. And talking about the approach to a definition of the intercultural mediation, we remember Brown and Marriott and their alternative dispute resolution. In their opinion, the mediation is a process of facilitation when parties are in conflict or in a disagreement and they have to accept to be assisted by a mediator. To act and facilitate parties in conflict, uh, to do this, a mediator needs procedures, techniques, knowledge and skills concerning the communication, conflicts, and conflict resolutions. That's why mediation must be intentional, confidential, and respectful for all those parties are involved. Marshall Rosenberg, concerning the mediation process, affirms that this mediation uh, should be based as well on the non-violent communication, so-called positive attitude as in his opinion, words are windows more they are, they are walls. This is the name of the books. Words are windows or they are walls. Jean-François C, this is chairman of Centre National de la Médiation Paris, reports that the mediation is an ability to create links, connections. In his opinion, the mediator acts within its own interculturality which enables the mediator to build bridges, to launch bridges for identities. Uh, I come back again to Margaret Cohen Emmerich, and uh, which follows in, uh, in his um, methodology, uh, Jean-François Assis, and identifies mediators as being bridges between two universities, two cultures, if we want migrants and social society. In our opinion, mediation facilitates communication, information, translation, and professional orientation process. 
Sonia Feynman, which she she is also a mediator and she conducted research with uh, Magali, um, considered that mediators uh, female makes a clear distinction between a translator and a mediator. We have to be uh, very um, aware that there is a clear distinction between those, these two professionals. Romena Con on the Italian side considered that intercultural mediators should be a key factor between language and culture, and the mediator should remain at the doorstep. Very significant idea and also innate vision. Uh, the mediator should be neutral and impartial, sidestepping neither one side nor the another the other. Romina Coyne uses the term of Alcantara, Arabic term meaning bridge suspended between two rivers. And now talking about emotions, I wanted I want to kindly um, listen attentively those four questions, and then I will explain why this was part of research which originated the second research concerning the emotion. Kindly look attentively at both comics. What are they communicating to you? Describe the message. What is the first emotion you feel? Describe the reaction. What do you want to do with such emotion? Do you feel you communicate, interact, and live in an anti-cultural society? And now there are two comics. The first one, one has lashes. If you do not die laughing, Charlie Abdo, Charia Hebdo, Sans cours du fouet si vous n'êtes pas mort de rire. And the second one, when I hear the word gun, I reach for my pen. Quand j'entends le nom de votre fée, je sors mon cibot. So, kindly, Linda, would you, if there are answers. So I invite everyone to go ahead and type in your answers or raise your hand if you would like me to give you the microphone. It will take a little minute to go away either way. Okay. Are you hearing us? Ah, okay, we have a hand. I have to find it. Please give me that. There we go. Louise, okay. Louise Goodman, I'm going to give you the microphone. I have activated it. You should be able to speak now. Yes, please. Now, I believe you have to have the microphone on, on your computer. Because we're not hearing anything. I think she can write otherwise. I made a mistake. I don't know. But I can't hear her. And maybe no, I can't Linda hear her either. Louise Goodman said she I made a mistake. Hang on. Could you please write the question in the chat? Hang on. Yeah. They can hear, but not very well. What is the question? Are you going to write it? Mihaela? The question? Yes. yes. I don't have a, but I, 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 I was, I, I couldn't understand her question. Because if there is a problem of audio, we can write each other. Yeah, I have someone here trying to talk to us on the phone. Is this true? Hello? Yeah? I know it was it was you, Linda. No, no. No, no, no. At, at the end, Louise, uh, just I don't have a question. Could you show the first drawing again? Of course. 
Okay. Uh -huh. This is the first one. It's Mahomet editor in chef. We have 100 some... lashes. If you do not die laughing, is uh, um, making fun of Sharia, the Islamic law. And I use this, it was a provocation, of course. I use this just to understand people in front of me, the interviews at the time, what kind of emotion those comics, uh, let's call them comics, uh, uh, created in them. And what uh, were their reactions? But before uh, I talk about this, I, would, uh, I wanted to, to have a, a, a a bit interaction with you. What kind? What what are emotions? What are the emotions that this uh, V seeing this uh, um, uh, comics uh, generated in you? Laugh, not laugh, angry, uh, whatsoever. You have, you have someone here, uh, Mihaela, who said, "I find the first one inappropriate, and the second one too." A little too simplistic. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, people are having a little bit of trouble with the sound. Okay, uh, someone else says it makes me smile, but they okay. need interpretation and good intentions. But this person, this is Thomas, and I'm not sure I have the. I don't. My screen doesn't show the whole last name. He says he doesn't feel particularly emotional that they're not provocative enough so they, okay. they don't elicit emotion okay that uh, when going. okay someone asked you want us to express our feelings on the images yes we have irritation okay we have the first one generates a negative emotion of course thank you oh. Positive representation of violence. Okay. And the second one generates a positive emotion, a positive reaction, response, or defense to the idea of physical violence. Oh, thank you very much. Thank and you very someone much. Someone here that says they bring back terrible memories, so it makes me feel sad. Okay, I can understand. I can understand. I can understand. And we have someone. Uh, the first one is aggressive. Yes, yeah, yeah, I can understand, I understand all, I understand and respect all the, the emotions that, and thank you very much for, uh, for having have, shared them with, with us. Uh, my, husband, but, my husband is Moroccan, and I know that prophet imagery is not receivable in Muslim religion. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you. Growing sadness that there's so much misunderstanding and things going wrong between Islam and Christianity. Yes. The first, another person, the first comic makes me feel just slightly awkward. I will laugh at it, but I think it's a joke to make in private with people you trust. Oh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And Muslim people feel as if their culture is not understood and respected. Okay. Okay, someone says they're not funny. I don't feel any emotions. The second was simply not funny, no emotion. Okay. But someone else, positive indeed, said it's better than revolver. And that the hum humor is very cultural. So yes, of course. Of course. Funny. Yes, of course. Yes, of course. Um, I, 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 I just, I will say just a few words about the, the reaction of the interviews. I started my, um, my research just immediately after um, the act of terrorism happened in Paris. It was in January 2015. And uh, some people were, um, had, which is obvious, had strong reactions to this. Some people not, which is, I mean, uh, each emotion, each idea that we have has to be respected by others. Now, coming back to the people that I interviewed, in total were 55 interculturalist communication experts, academicians, psychologists, linguists. Um, I mean, I, I tried to have them from different um, countries, Italy, France, Romania, Sweden, Germany, Morocco, 
Elder Jordan, Middle East, and also Canada, Japan, and China. The emotions that have been identified uh, were laugh and oh, paradox and sadness, anger and curiosity at once, joy and sadness, or melancholy, curiosity and sadness, curiosity. Uh, curiosity was um, captured into the major answers. And we know that joy and sadness uh, are emotion ba are basic, basic emotions as they have been defined by Paul Ekman. And then such emotions, reactions may be considered in line and coherent with the events they are connected. I affirm that as I observed the faces of the interviews and I realized that once they saw the comics, they suddenly associated the comics with the satirical newspaper and especially to those dramatic events. It came out uh, the attitude of the interviews to reflect uh, upon those events as well as their will to share, manage and cope with their sadness and melancholy. We know that joy and curiosity launch the message, I'm glad, I'm curious, and they link to past, present and future. Paradox and sadness send the message, I'm sad. However, I think I have some problems. However, the resulting emotions confirm the fact that they are the link between the body and the mind. Their reactions can be considered universal. I can affirm that curiosity or being curious may help people in conflict to facilitate the communication throughout the mediation to find constructive and positive and diverse solutions. Curiosity implies a focus, a goal, even a desire. Curiosity shall exist also in the mindset of the mediator or in the mindset of the interculturalist. But I wonder, shall we consider the curiosity an emotion or rather a mental attitude? Shall we name it the emotion of the reason is it inside us that it emerges or is it stimulated outside? I myself can certainly say I'm touched by emotion, but I can also say I'm touched by curiosity. This is my question. In your opinion, curiosity might be considered an emotion. Is it an emotion? What do you think? If you want to share with us Uh, I don't know if you still can hear me or the attendees heard me and if they want to answer. Is your curiosity? Hello. Sorry, Mihaila, we're here, we're here. The sound is causing a lot of problems for a lot of people. You're kind of, oh. you're warbling in and out and we can hear you, but it takes a certain amount of concentration. And okay. I think that's why people have a little bit of difficulty answering immediately. Um, let, well, me, let me tell you what we have here. We have wonderful well, ideas and thank you. And it see, someone says curiosity seems the result of emotion. Yes. Oh, thank you. Okay. I do. And someone, the sound is mentioned again. And you have someone who's mentioned there's an atlas of emotions, which is a work by Paul Ekman yes. and Dalai Lama. Yeah, there is. And uh, the book they are talking about, especially Dalai Lama, about the negative emotions. Thank you very much. Yes, I do. There is a significant book. Yes. Thank yeah. you. And it says, someone says, curiosity is more a mindset and less an emotion, in their opinion. And agreement, curiosity is an emotion, a positive one. Okay, so okay. we have both sides. I think curiosity is not an emotion, but it is linked to positive emotions. And oh, thank you. you. Yeah, I do. And there is also the answer if I mean the, the research is public, so 
I can say it. This is also the answer of Margaret Cohen Emery. There is no, uh, um, curiosity is not an emotion. There is a positive attitude linked to positive emotion. Yeah, because I feel good. I feel curious when I'm feeling secure, good, confident, and I can emotionally afford to be open and curious. Others say curiosity may be called an emotion, but not as strong as the basic ones like sadness or happiness. Okay, thank okay. you. Someone else gives you Christophe André, a book called La Force des Émotions. They're recommending. Oh, I don't know it. I, I mean, I, I will. Uh, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm very interested. And thank you for the for having silent to me. And I will, I will. I mean, I, I think I can, I can, I can see the chat just. Yeah. La force des émotions, Christophe André. Uh, yeah, uh, oui, je, je le connais, je le connais. Uh, yes, I know it. I know it. Thank you very much. Yes. And here we have curiosity is a complex emotion that must be positive because it is squelched. In other words, it's killed by fear. Okay. Oh, yes. And I feel curiosity when I'm faced with something I don't understand. So oh, this is a positive approach. Thank you. Have. Those are the answers we have on that one. Oh, thank you very much for having shared with us your, your ideas and your conception of about curiosity. And thank you, thank you very much. I was curious and I was positive. And what I can say, it was um, um, a positive and interesting exchange with uh, your ideas and perceptions and conceptions of of uh, emotions and uh, um, especially of um, uh, curiosity. Yeah, we have another one here that just came in. Curiosity enables us to create a bridge to the other person. It's a very strong coaching tool, enables us to be more present with the other person and to become less focused on our own self and ego. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you very much. Um, I, if you are interested, I mean, I couldn't um, uh, insert into my presentation. There is uh, the North America um, a theory uh, which has been published in 2010. Uh, if I remember well, um, curiosity is considered uh, one of the new emotions. Uh, that's why uh, originated this this. The answer of the first research, which was the main, main answer was curiosity, originated the second research, which is not completed. But uh, I mean, I can say the interview, the new people have accepted to be interviewed um, tend to answer that the uh, curiosity is not an emotion, but an attitude. Okay. So uh, concerning uh, my presentation, Linda, I have finished. I don't know if you want to to say something uh, about uh, the new webinar. I don't know. I, I, I just want to thank you very, very much, all of you. Yes, yes. What I would like to do before we close is first ask if there are any other comments I have open yes. the, poll, the poll which is our evaluation and ask all of you please to go ahead and complete it for us it helps us continue to improve our webinars uh someone here also says practicing mindfulness is also a good way to cope with emotions oh thank you i do confirm this yeah. thank you and um the last thing that i would say to everyone is simply remind you that our next webinar will be on October 23rd at 6 p.m. with Tamara Thorpe, who calls herself the Millennial Mentor. And she's going to be speaking about fostering age inclusion in the new millennium. So I hope we'll see very, very many of you then. 
if there are no further comments, I'm going to say thank you to all of you. It's been a pleasure. Yes, I can, I can say the same thing. It was really a pleasure. And uh, I would like to, to be able to read one by one the, 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 the answers that the attendees have given. Yes, Just because I'm really curious. Yeah, and uh, Mihaela, can I ask yeah. you please, would you type your email address into the chat box so that this is our way you can write one, the PowerPoint will be on the YouTube channel when the, re the recording of this webinar is uploaded, which will be uh, within the next few days, I believe, within the next few days or a week or so. Since with the new personal data protection laws, we cannot, us, send things to you. So she has put her address in there. If you specifically would like to contact her, send her an email. Okay, I think, is that okay? Yes, very okay, yeah. thank you, Linda, yeah, yes. People that would like to know more or maybe continue a dialogue with you can contact you directly. Oh, yes, yes, I, I, I just I have written my email address and you all are welcome. I'm at your disposal for any kind of questions exchange of ideas, inquiries, and uh, I will be happy to, to reply to you. Okay. Do we Thank have you. Any, uh, Thank you. Any last comments? Here we go. Many thanks. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, everyone, I'm going to say good evening and stop the recording. Thank you all very, very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, please uh, um, continue with our cultures of interculturality and uh, of uh, um, the culture that theater all over the world try to uh, develop and share. Thank you. <laughs>